Forex Time Limited, an international foreign exchange broker, has suggested Bank Negara Malaysia increase its interest rates to encourage more investors to hold more money in the market and thus strengthening the ringgit. Vice President of Corporate Development and Chief Market Analyst Jamil Ahmad said that once the ringgit rebounded, it could limit the pressure on the currency, the local economy and make goods importation cheaper. He said that if the central bank moves its rate a little bit higher from the current 3.25%, it could benefit the country. But again, it is still based on the global market. Two different factors at play here. A very aggressive oversupply and there's concerns about the global economy. For the oil markets to rebound, the chances right now are looking low. But if this aggressive oversupply, and we're talking around 3 million barrels a day, if this reduced dramatically, and there's also optimism that markets, sorry, economies will import more oil, this increases potential. It's difficult to say a particular quarter or a particular time frame for when a currency can rebound. What I would stress you need to look out for is the economic data. How is the economy doing? What is the overall sentiment towards the emerging markets? Right now, the currency is strengthening away from its milestone lows. But again, if these external pressures intensify or resume at a greater extent, there could be further weakness. He told this in a media briefing on the outlook for the ringgit here today. He said that Bank Negara Malaysia could consider raising its rate when the inflation was at its peak. As at October 2015, Malaysia's inflation eased to 2.5% year-on-year from 2.6% in September and 3.1% in August. Meanwhile, Jamil said that the U.S. Federal Reserve was set to increase its rates this month, which could boost the U.S. dollar. If the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, let's say they move in December, this is supported towards the dollar. So if there's demand towards the dollar, and if there's attraction for investors to place their capital in the United States economy, this is where there's a risk for capital outflows. If interest rate policy is left unchanged, this then does not have such an impact on capital outflows. But one thing I must stress a lot is that it's not just the U.S. interest rate policy that has a contributing behind the ringgit decline. There's a lot of different risks out there. Uh, U.S. central bank policy, depressed commodity prices, weak emerging market sentiment, reduced domestic growth. It shouldn't just be limited to the Federal Reserve when people are speculating or conversing on why the Malaysian con uh, currency has declined. There's a lot of different risks at play. He suggested Malaysia and other countries consider a ban on U.S. dollar deposits. He said that in August this year, Nigeria's central bank banned banks from taking foreign currency cash deposits and to boost the supply of U.S. dollars to money changes. He added that all this helped bolster the currency and economy of Africa's biggest oil producer. Jamil urged the Malaysian government to continue its spending to improve domestic confidence and at the same time speed up any economic reforms in order to exploit the strong potential of the ASEAN economic community. He said that the AEC recorded the third largest gross domestic product in Asia and seventh in the world. It represents 11% of global foreign direct investment currently.